Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time you're speaking. I'm Cyclone. It's time for more or less play Train Simulator Classic. We are now about a week away, actually a little less than a week away. I think it's on uh, Thursday, whereas this is coming out on Friday. So we're a little less than a week away from the Long Island Railroad release at this time. Not a lot of uh, information come out yet. We know who made the route, and I think we know who made the train, but we don't know yet who made the scenarios, uh, or who's making the scenarios, assuming they're done. Uh, I'm still waiting to uh, see the preview stream. There's no preview stream that we saw this week, unfortunately, so it's going to be next week. Uh, well, more information then. So I am kind of just gave up on waiting and decided I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, Class 442 driving. We're going to put these in. I'm going to slot them on for this entire weekend. I'm going to skip Tuesdays, and I'm going to go ahead and do a video for a Sunday instead. So you're going to get these three back to back to back on three consecutive days. I'm going to leave a gap on Tuesday so I have a little time to uh, be ready and get in the right frame of mind for coming back to North America and doing a New York route, my first New York route. I have several, and I haven't actually driven any of them for you yet. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing that. So for right now, we're going to stay in the UK. We're going to do the Class 442. This is the train that I know shows up in a scenario pack on the South London to Brighton route. And since I've already played London to Brighton itself, why not do the scenarios on this and introduce this train as well? That's exactly what I'm going to do here for these next three days. And then we're going to have that train introduced. I can go ahead and add the Armstrong Powerhouse Sound Pack if I want to for future use. But for today, they're going to be vanilla. We're not going to change them today. So uh, they're going to be the vanilla form for right now. And I mean, so that means that we're going to uh, start City Express as the first scenario. Catwick Express is listed as the second, but it is also the longest. So I'm debating just doing that one uh, on Sunday as the last one. And then we have Seaside Fire, which is where we're being given permission to do a world record attempt. Whereas this, you would think it's a full run. It's actually a back and forth from Gatwick to London back to Gatwick. So uh, we have an interesting variety of scenarios here. One which goes all the way over to Brighton. One that goes, and this is, again, that starts from Gatwick, Gatwick to Brighton. This one goes from uh, Gatwick to London. And then this one goes Gatwick to London back to uh, Gatwick. And as you can see, my friend scores are showing up for these three scenarios. So it looks like we have, uh, I have I have to challenge these uh, 979, 978. I have to try and get a top score on here. Can I do it? Let's find out. Let's get started, shall we? Before we do anything else, let's take a quick look at this train and how it operates. There's a number of functions here that uh, the competent driver needs to be fully aware of. We're going to start way down here in the bottom uh, corner. You can see over here hiding down is that little light switch type thing there. That light switch technically indicates which brake mode you're on. Now, um, there's two different brake modes. I actually don't know a lot about these brake modes because this is my first time driving. I'm going to uh, try to get you some more information on this. But as I'm looking at this in the uh, manual, I don't seem to see any information on what the two brake modes are. Therefore, it's hard for me to indicate uh, just what kind of... Uh, setting applies like what those brake modes are. I actually don't know anything about them. So I'll have to try and get you some more information on that before the final scenario as it might matter what brake mode we're in by that final scenario. So right now I'm going to leave it just as it is because I honestly don't know. Uh, above that you can see that we do have the train brake. So this does have a uh, it seems to it looks like it's notched but I can actually tell you it is not notched. It actually does have a uh, it is actually done by whatever percentage you want. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna be able to go smooth. It's completely smooth is what I'm trying to say. So it's a smooth train brake. So no problems with that. Uh, I'm. By the way, I should point out that way at the start of my list here, way up here, there's a sun visor. I believe that is the uh, first item listed in the manual. So we have a sun visor you can put down. Let's not forget that. Before I forget about it, we got it out of the way. So moving back into the rest of the train here, we have the DRA, the Driver Reminder Appliance, right here. So when you have that on, you can't apply power. Let's leave it on for right now so we can do the next part of this. The sander is next to that. So it's actually, actually, you take that back, it's above here. It's this thing. So that's the sander. It turns green as you use it. Drops sand on the tracks to give you a better adhesion. Further down, we have the um, tail lights, the head, head and tail lights. We have the cab lights, which does that, obviously. So we can see that. Above that, we have the instrument lights, which turns those on. So those are important things to do. Uh, the headlights and the instrument lights, that is. We do have the wiper button on this part of the display. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see. If we push, if we punch the wiper button like uh, that, we have to actually, if you move it with the uh, mouse, you have to twist it, but you can also just push the V button and it will set itself. So V does do it automatically, whereas the uh, actual mouse, you have to actually move it back and forth. So you're holding it kind of like that when you move it. Uh, next to that we have the well button that doesn't do anything but further next to that we have the horn which is two-tone okay that's a silent one so we only got one tone unfortunately I thought it was gonna be a two-tone I'm gonna assume the Armstrong powerhouse and hit, uh, sound pack changes that to a two-tone horn 
So since I'm playing without that pack for right now, so be it. We do have the uh, either AWS acknowledge here. So any red or yellow signals or changes in speed, we have to acknowledge that. The signal buzzer is right above that. So that little black thing right there, which we can't really use the way I want to. Uh, the reverser is way over here as well. The most One of the most important things, the reverser. That lets you uh, get ready to move. You can see I pushed Q to reset that and I can drop it to reverse as well. So straight up and down. This is the throttle. So this goes, I'm gonna to try to show you how this operates. It goes into a shunt sig status and then to, uh, to uh, series, parallel, and weak field. There are only those four settings. And then of course you have off, which is where it's back at right now. So that's how that operates. You'll see that as on the HUD as we go. There's a parking brake, which can be set right here. So the parking brake is now on and it is now off. And the desk fan, which is just a little uh, gimmicky thing that you can do, there is a desk fan. And uh, the desk fan literally just blows air on you. So it's up here. Yeah, that's it right there. So you can turn it on, you can kind of see the fan going. It's a little bit of a gimmicky thing, but it's there. And I uh, will zoom back in so a better view of the fan spinning. You can go down to a low setting, which just does this. They can turn, whoops, that's on again. They can turn it right off. So it's just a bit of a gimmick. That doesn't really do anything to improve the function of the train. So uh, I like having the air on, so why not? In any case, let's get ourselves ready to operate this service, shall we? Look at that beautiful thing. Galway Express has launched, it should be has, isn't it? Has launched a new fleet in the form of class 442s. You are in the driving seat of this VIP service to London, Victoria. Nope, jumps to the header, limited to 40 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and open the doors because I assume we're gonna need to do that. By the way, I never pointed out the GSM radio. It's not actually usable and we don't have an EP for the 442. So the GSM radio is basically not usable. That's all you need to know about that. All the Armstrong Powerhouse trains you'll find they do use that, we can't use it here. In any case, opening doors, open the, we just did that. And allow passengers to board here at Gatwick Airport before departing. Okay, we just did that, so thank you. So let's bring up the HUD and uh, you can see, obviously the settings for the uh, reverser. You're gonna see those other settings I mentioned for the throttle in a moment. The brake is set 20% right now, just leave it like that. We have a red signal because there's a train leaving in front of us. We're boarding anyway. Let's look at the train before we depart, shall we? As you see, it takes a little while for the speed to actually uh, go in, but once it does, we are off and we are leaving Gatwick Airport, Platform 1. Our first and only stop today is at London, Victoria, but we do have three waypoints on the way to make sure we stay on our path. You can see uh, there's an unnumbered service coming in, just 4421, so it doesn't really mean anything to us. So I'm going to move back to a shunt, to a series setting rather to finish getting up to 30 miles per hour. Once we get up to 30, we're gonna hold there for a moment because that is our current speed limit. The junctions are limited to 40 miles per hour as we saw in the introduction. So we can now get up to 40 miles per hour. We're gonna move it temporarily to a weak field setting. This may not be how you normally do it, but the way this scenario is set up, you pretty much have to do that if you wanna be on time. So it may not be normal, but we have to do that. So now we're up to 40, we're gonna turn it off for a second. We're gonna now go up to 90. Now we're gonna stay in weak field until we get to at least the area before East Croydon, so South Croydon basically. We're gonna stay in weak field until we need to start slowing down for East Croydon where we'll have to be down to 30 miles per hour and it could be very busy as we come into there because a lot of lines merge in by that point. This is Horley.
Now you might be thinking an express service to London Victoria has got to be the easiest thing you can do. There's no stops, just go the speed limits and you're fine. When you're going a train that doesn't let you have multiple levels of throttle other than going between series parallel and weak field, it's actually not that easy. For example, I'm now going to try to fiddle with the brakes to find a good brake setting to maintain with weak field at this point in the track. Uh, this will vary whether I'm on an uphill or downhill, but the speed level is going to be constant no matter uh, what happens with the hill, the power level that is. So I'm going to have to uh, deal with uphills and downhills in a very interesting fashion. I did not see that train, sorry, I didn't get that train number for you. We're going to see lots of train numbers. We can miss one or two. That's fine. Everything's fine. So I see a train moving away from us right now. That is 2C78 going along the uh, Red Hill line going towards Selhurst. The lines, the lines are now split. I thought I heard something. The lines are now split, but uh, we are now, but we are, but we did just pass Selhurst. We're still going to go alongside the Red Hill line at least until the next station. That next station that we see on the Red Hill line will be Earlswood. We will see that station, and then the Red Hill line will leave us and go in its on its own direction for a little while. So I'm going to maintain my speed as much as I can until I absolutely have to drop to the 80. And once I have to drop to the 80, I will do so. I'm looking at doing it about three tenths of a mile out. That might be enough time or it might not. I'm going to do a slightly larger brake application to help lead into it because I was going a little bit uh, into the 90 there and that's a little fast for right now for my timing. Four tenths of a mile is good enough. Take a 31% brake application here. There is the uh, station Earlswood that I mentioned earlier. You're going to need a little more brakes actually, so 42. I really need more brakes. It wasn't going at all. So I got it down now. We are good. So I'm going to uh, keep a stronger brake application now because at a lower speed, weak field will try to apply more speed and will counteract more of the brakes. So I have to keep a stronger brake on to counteract the uh, higher potential to gain speed. Right now I'm holding at 79.5. I'm going to ease the brakes off now. And I can now take them off completely and get myself back up to 90. Another service, 1B74 coming along. I did not want to put that brake application on. That was an error. I think I'm doing good for my timing though. I have two miles to go. And I've got about a minute and a half to go. Yeah, I'm in good shape. I'm in a really good shape here. This is exactly where I want to be. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough brake. Whoop, that's too much. I said enough brake application to maintain a good speed. I'm, I'm losing speed at 9%, but I'm going to be gaining in a moment because I'm coming up to a downhill. In fact, I'm now on flat ground, so that will allow me to gain speed again. I'm getting back up to 90. I am going to be very early for this uh, waypoint. I'm going to be very early. Not a complaint at all, just going to be very early. There, 19% will do for now. And here we are, query tunnel waypoint. It's going to be at least five seconds early here, maybe 10. There it is. Too close for the tunnel for me to get you a good shot going into the tunnel, but. I took an earlier run of this to see how the scenario played out. Uh, I was not feeling very good about that timing and my first run actually was not good. So I had to give it another pre preparatory run. I actually hit it right on time. So I actually uh, was a little earlier that time. That is actually fantastic. 
And because I was a little early, I do not mind that I'm only down to 88 right now as much as I might have in the previous run. So uh, I'm going to try to keep my speed heading up now from there. see the exit of the quarry tunnel we're about to head over in about a half a mile or so I don't know the exact number but we're about to head over a, a point in the track where we cross the Red Hill line okay, service coming by there that is 1b27 I think that said and uh, here is the point where we cross the Red Hill Line. I wanted to get you a shot of that, but I, I didn't uh, catch it in time. <laughs> Whoops. I think I'm seeing more trains up ahead, or at least I will shortly. We're going to be seeing South, uh, sorry, Colston South coming up. We did miss uh, Red Hill and Merstham on the Red Hill Line. There's no, uh, those are the two stations that we did not see, that they did not appear alongside the quarry line. She's trying to stay within the 87 to 89 range right now. I don't care where I am in that range as long as I'm in that range. So we're going to be watching for Colston South coming up on our right. So you can see the Red Hill line joining us clearly on the right now. There's another line coming in. I think that's the line from Reedham and from Tattenham Corner at the end. So that should be Colson South coming up now. Or no, maybe not. Maybe we already missed it. see lots of trains coming up here you can actually see 1b76 is coming towards us right now there's Colston South or no this is Pearly So the next station coming up is going to be Pearly Oaks. And here is Pearly Oaks. We're gonna be expecting to slow down in a moment. There's our warning, I didn't wanna slow down that much. But we are gonna slow down all the same. Going to move the train down to a series setting so we can slow down properly because we don't want to keep all the resistors on while we're trying to slow down to a speed as low as 30 miles per hour. So I'm going to ahead and increase the brake application for a moment, ease it back off again. I don't know if we can get down to 60 in time, so I'm trying to get down there at the moment I want to, not too quickly. We have, we have about two minutes to make our waypoint at East Croydon. It is the entry to the station that counts as our waypoint. The next station will be South Croydon. And South Croydon is actually the terminus, as you see, 2L30, another train I missed. South Croydon is actually the terminus of the South London network. So if you're on the South London network, you will start no further south than this station. I see yellows up ahead. So I don't feel bad about maintaining this speed now at a lower level. 
We need to slow down anyway, but I was a little early slowing down. I'm actually being rewarded for it because we have yellow signals. This is a single yellow signal now. I'm going to uh, put a little more brake on. I'm going to go ahead and just hold my speed where I am until I get closer to the 30, at which point I need to slow down anyway. I might actually, never mind, I'm going to have to slow down right now. It's a red signal up ahead. So I need to put a little more brakes on right now just to be careful. We're going to be routed via platform one. It is not a stop. We are only being routed via the platform. Because we have to be at the platform in 20 seconds and educate guests, that is our yellow up ahead. And sure enough, it is. But we can't be guaranteed anything after that. So I'm going to go ahead and just watch the speed we go until I see that we have an increased signal uh, for faster travel. A yellow means you have to drive under caution. I'm staying no higher than 20 for the time being. We're now under the effect of a 30 speed limit. 22, I should say I'm going. Sorry, not 20. So there's our timing this bonus. Arrival at East Croydon. We're going to keep going at this point. I can't really see the yellow yet. I see the yellow now. I might not have had enough time to slow down there, but... Um, it's now a double yellow. I can go back to a, not shunt, I can go back to a parallel for right now. I'm gonna head back to series for a moment. We're gonna go ahead and put a brake back on because we have to stay at 30. But the double yellow means we have a little bit more leeway now in terms of our speed, so I can stay at exactly 30. And I'm gonna start increasing to 45 knowing we're under a double yellow as well. Or, four, yeah, 45, that's right. So up to a weak field setting to gain a little more power. I'm gonna drop it back now. We are under a double yellow. So right now, double yellow is exactly where I wanna be. I actually prefer double yellow over a single yellow. And you might be asking why, as we are now allowed to go up to 60, I might actually take a, at least 55 out of that. The reason I like double yellows is because uh, it means that we are not, that we know we're following the train but we're not too close to the train that we can't, that we have a problem reacting if that train were to come to a sudden stop. Now being an AI in a scenario that has a fixed setup, and we now have a green, so I'm gonna go up to line speed, 60 and even 70 miles per hour. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that speed back up to, on a parallel to 60, and eventually punch up to 70. There's another train over there, that's 2J48. So again, the double yellow means that we're not following too close, and it means we're gonna be able to go ahead. Oh, that was close. We're gonna be able, I was gonna to say, to uh, go ahead and um, go the speed we wanna go until we see another yellow signal, in which case we can start bringing it down again because we know we're catching up to that train. Brakes are off, I'm gonna move back to parallel again. Let's not have a heart attack this time, please, and thank you. That is a yellow for us now. So as of now, I know I'm going to hold my speed where I am. I've temp It's green, but I've temporarily moved the throttle to off. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into series. We still have a yellow up ahead. I don't know if that was Selhurst or Thornton Heath. I've been panicking about my speed, so I might have actually missed Selhurst, that might have been Thornton Heath, but those are the next two stations after East Croydon, either way. So whichever one that was, you may have seen another one pass. If that was the case, then we know that's Thornton Heath. Still a yellow signal ahead, so I'm not trying to get too much speed because I know the train ahead of me is going to eventually slow down to a 60 itself, and I'm gonna be forced to stay, oh, I, in fact, I already know I'm catching up because the signal did not clear to a green. So this will probably be a double yellow up ahead for us, but I'm not gonna gain any more speed because I know I'm catching the other train. There's two R60 over on the right. Now my ETA is showing that I'm doing okay. It shows me slightly late, but you know what? We can do that. That's perfectly fine. So I put my speed back up to a series position. So we're now throttling in series again. I actually wanted a brake on, why did I do that? There, that'll do. That is Norbury, so I did miss Selhurst. So uh, this is Norbury Station.
60 is now the speed limit for the train ahead of us, so I feel uh, certainly within my rights to stay within the 60 mile per hour threshold at this time. I'm not going to try to uh, milk any additional speed in the remainder of the 70 area, because it may backfire later if I do. In fact, I'm gaining speed on downhill, so I have to try to make sure I stay within the 60 as well. So the next station is Straightham Common. That is going to lead us past the Straightham branch heading down to Horsham. Is that a single yellow? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Did it just clear? It just cleared. The red is the other line. Okay, I panicked for a moment because I saw a red. But that was on the other line. We now have a double yellow. So I'm going to let ourselves get back up to 60. Panic moment is over. Our ETA is actually before our arrival time. So I'm going to take it a little easier now. We still have yellow signals ahead, which is good. put a temporary brake on to make sure we were good now we have a green signal so I know I can proceed at line speed until I see otherwise that's gonna let me go ahead and move back up to 60 it looks like this scenario is set up so that if you're seeing yellow signals you are going to be early uh, if you are seeing only green signals you're either on time or late I remember doing the football special scenario in the 377. This is a little more stressful than the football special. It's an express service. You're not stopping just like the football special, but in this one, uh, you know that you have a little less control over the exact speed you go. You only have three settings, and they all continue to go up. You can't just idle the throttle at a certain level and expect it to behave. You're going to have to manage your brakes with it. That is another train. That is two E56 going by. We have a lot of signals here. We saw the yellow. It's just turned green, so we're gonna be bleak, we're gonna be bamming that alert a lot here. I believe this is Banbury, if I remember the station correctly. Oh, Balham, sorry, Balham Station. That means the next station after this is going to be Wandsworth Common. We have a double yellow, so another train, the train ahead of us is slowing down, or we're just catching it. I'm not sure which. So I'm going to slow down a little bit to respond to that. We're now showing to be slightly late. That's okay. This is Wandsworth Common. We're going to be at Clapham Junction in 1.3 miles. We have two minutes to do it, so you know what? This is acceptable. So I have a feeling the train ahead of us might be stopping at Clapham Junction, and that might be why we're getting these signals. If so, we might have a single yellow and a red up ahead. That is definitely a possibility. But the ETA has just started moving again from the uh, where it was. In fact, it gave us a little more time now, so we might actually be clear to go through at this time. Looks like we have a double yellow, so I am going to make the timing at Clapham Junction with absolutely no issues. We have a whole minute to do it, and that's just to be on time. I'm going to slow down now to get ready for the 45. And 
here's Clapham Junction coming up right now. bit of a leg on that uh, train going through at the start of the frame. We lost a few frames there on the start of that uh, shot there, unfortunately. Oh well, it is what it is. We have yellow signals continuing up ahead. We are now entering the 45 mile per hour segment just ahead. Which means that we are still following a train, but the train may be going to Waterloo. We may be clear after we get off onto our next section here. But because we're under a single yellow, I'm going to go ahead and increase the brake application just to be safe. We have to be at London Victoria uh, at 1349. We have our estimated time arriving right now is 1347. So there is a possibility of a red, pardon me, a red signal coming up here. We do have to take the right here. We don't have a choice. I don't even know who that service was and I don't care. We're on an uphill, so I'm taking my time on this uphill, but I want to see we do have a yellow, a double yellow, that's even better. So I'm letting my train get up to the speed it wants to go for right now. We're going to eventually be cut to a 40, I believe, and then I know we're going to be cut to a 20 coming in London, Victoria. That's where I'm going to probably turn the throttle off because we're going to have a downhill in London, Victoria. And it will definitely be a good way to avoid speeding by making sure the throttle is off, let the train coast on the downhill where it needs to. There is the 40 coming up, as you see, after the Brighton Up Fast Battersea. Now, you might be wondering why that is showing up as a marker with half a mile to go until that. It's not one of my stop of my uh, checkpoints. And hello, woo. It's not one of my checkpoints, I was trying to say. Because it's not one of my checkpoints, I'll coast for a moment. Uh, because it's not one of my checkpoints, uh, it, is sim it is still a task. If you look in the editor, it is still a task for the train to perform to go by the Up Fast Battersea. That is a red. Okay, that was a problem with the signal apparently, but we are permitted to pass. Apparently there was a problem with the signal, but we had the path. Uh, thank goodness I was able to pass or I would have had a problem with the scenario there. In any case, like I was saying, in the editor that is still a task, but because the um, it is not on the list. That's just a hidden task that shows where the train needs to go for its pathing. So it is more of a pathing checkpoint than anything else. It doesn't mean anything else. We have a double yellow, so I'm going up to uh, no higher than 40, but I'm actually going to drop it down a little early because I see that our station platform is not yet set. That means we're going to have to eventually come to a stop anyway and wait for it to be set. So we will get a red at that last signal. This is a single yellow. It just got set for us, but I have to come down 20 anyway. I'm gonna stay at 30 for the time being, but we are now clear to go into our station. The train that we were waiting for was this one, 1B80. It is on its way out right now. Another train coming in behind it, you might've noticed a couple just labeled 375s and a delayed 377. We don't have any service numbers for any of them, so, uh, oh well. We just know what they are, just that's all we need to know. You can see my throttle is now off as I bring the train down to a 20 mile per hour limit here. I'm now down to 20 miles per hour. My only goal now is to remain under 20 miles per hour as I'm now under the effect of that speed limit. We have a full two minutes to make this stop and I'm going a little slower than I want to for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just let the train gain speed while the back of it I think is still on the downhill, but it is going to eventually just coast. Normally I would go ahead and increase the speed back up to or the throttle back up to a series setting. I may still have to do that in a moment, but for right now I'm okay. I can just coast in. I actually want to bring it down just a little more just to make sure an emergency brake is not triggered at the platform. So I'm going to bring it down to about 11 right now and that should do the job. That should get me in safely and I should be able to just coast to the end of the platform at that point. Excellent. So the end of the platform and the end of the track 
is uh, two tenths of a mile away. We are going to 14, which I believe is straight ahead. Yeah, we're not taking the turn, so that's 15 over to the side. You see a train over at 16. Uh, I don't know if it's the train we were following or a different one. We have just entered the beginning of the platform area here. So as I'm, I'm not going to leave the train cab right now because we're going to get another beat for the signal at the end, if I remember correctly. But uh, otherwise, I would show you the platform as we come in. <laughs> Maybe we're not going to get another beep here. I thought we were. So I've just lowered the speed a little bit to make sure uh, we have the best chance of stopping where we want to at the end of the platform. Two more cars coming in. You can see they're different sizes on the HUD, interestingly enough. Going to add a little more brake power to this. And we're down to five right now. I'm just going to go ahead and coast in at this point at four, which seems a little slow. So I'm going to series it back up to five. And there we go. Okay. Back down to three. I almost went to emergency. That would not have been good. This is good enough for a stop. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to open the doors. And that is the end of the scenario. Let's take a look at our train as we finish. So that's another shuttle from uh, Gatwick Airport to London, Victoria taken care of. We are finishing this run. Someone else will take over for another trip out. There is another train coming in over there, I believe, at platform number 13, which is the one next to us. Either that or 12, but I think it was 13, because I thought I saw another train at 12. So yeah, they made London, Victoria, and even the Pearly area very busy in this scenario, and I like seeing the AI. It does cause a little bit of a loading lag from time to time on my setup, but it's nice to see all those AI trains and... I'm not going to complain about seeing more trains because it means the tracks are more alive. There's a lot of life on the scenario. And uh, that guy is boarding for the return trip. Okay, excellent. Nice work. Looks like the Class 442 fleet will fit in very nicely. Scenario complete. You bet it will. So I should have that last 200 points because I was well on time. Let's take a quick look at the ending screen, shall we? And there it is. Achievement unlocked, by the way. Gatwick Express, uh, Express City scoring it's been called it express city scoring 950 was the necessary points to gain for express city scoring and uh yeah i got a thousand uh you know overkill uh so that will put me at the top of the friends list immediately and i'm happy to see that and uh, that means i can now move on to the next scenario and uh, try to get to the top of the friends list on that one as well because i'm an overachiever there you go uh so the next scenario is going to be coming up next time that i'm still deciding which one it's going to be so i'll let you know when i start that video and uh, when is that video going to start well i'm posting these one after another so if you're seeing this uh on the day that i publish it the next video will be tomorrow if you're seeing it any other day stay on the playlist it's going to be coming up right after this one and that video will start shortly i just want to say make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when i post more content and uh again i'm cyclone have a wonderful day evening night whatever time it is for you you're part of the world if you leave see you later otherwise the next video will start in three Two, one.